We also continue to see the city impacted by the influx of asylum seekers. Since the spring of 2022, more than 168,000 have arrived, many of them living in temporary housing. And last month, Mayor Adams issued an executive order saying with 32 hours notice, charter buses will be required to drop off migrants in the city at certain times and designated locations. Now, Governor Murphy also asked the same to happen in New Jersey. CBS News correspondent Omar Villafranca visited PS51 in Hell's Kitchen to see how immigration is affecting education. He joins us now from Dallas. Omar, how'd your visit go? Um, it was interesting. Our reporting was really eye-opening, Christine. And we not only got the perspective from the migrant parents and kids, but from teachers and school administrators. And New Yorkers, y'all are very familiar. When these buses show up, either coming from Texas Governor Greg Abbott, who's sending migrants from the Texas border to New York City, um, or if they're coming on their own, if they have family there, a lot of the times the common thread is they are unannounced. Now, obviously, things are changing there to try to change that. But still, coming unannounced, uh, that creates a ripple effect. We talked to the teacher, uh, the principal there at PS51, she told me they got a phone call basically saying, we have 25 kids, do you have the space? She knew that was not gonna be the last phone call asking if they had the space for kids. They've had more than 150 kids come into that school now who are migrant children. That may, seem, that may not seem like a lot, but for a school that's big, do they have enough seats? Do they have enough of the meals for these kids' school supplies? We really got to see the ripple effect of this. Omar, the, the ripple effect, of course, goes right to the teachers. Many of these kids are not speaking English, yeah. and the translators are not mm -hmm. there either. How difficult is it for the teachers? Well, a lot of times these schools are having to scramble or hire or shift people over to their schools for an ESL, uh, English as a second language, or ENL, English as a new language. Because once these kids are coming in, they don't know what baseline where they are, and it's hard to teach kids if they can't communicate them, even to just the basic level. So we got to peek in on one of these classes where these kids are learning basic English. They may speak two or three other languages, but they don't speak English, and that's difficult for them to try to get the lesson plan to blend in with the rest of those kids. And one thing I want to say, I don't want to give away the story, obviously, but a lot of these kids make it, but not every kid does. And not to give it away, but you'll see some of that in our story this evening. All right, Omar, we look forward to that report. Thank you for joining us. Just so frustrating. Thank you, Omar, for your reporting Thank you. there. And you can catch Omar's full report tonight at 6.30 on the CBS Evening News with Nora O'Donnell. So difficult for the teachers and the families. Well, as he said, it's a ripple effect. Absolutely.